everybody. Welcome to From the Drummer's Perspective. Uh, I want to make sure I get a chance to hear from all of you all. Please tell me where you are from. Um, tell me where you are, you know, tuning in from. I, I'm going to give you some shout outs for those that are on here. Uh, we have, I think it's Dilly or Dilly Music Official. You you were the first to join on. We got John Byrne Thomas. Uh, <clears throat> he says congrats to Obed. Uh, man, I, I cannot wait for this episode. Uh, I have a relationship with all the drummers that have been uh, on this podcast or excuse me, I should say YouTube series. But um, man, this one goes deep. I, I've known Obed for a really long time, so I can't wait to talk about him. Uh, keep letting me know where you're coming in from. I see we got Peter Bylan from Stockholm. Keep coming in, and I want to welcome everybody again to Open Studio. I'm Ulysses Owens Jr. I'm really excited to be here with From the Drummer's Perspective. This is a weekly series where we get a chance to talk to some of the greatest artisans of the of the craft and really drummers that have been out here for many years and, and making great music, and, uh, and they're great people. And I think many times we get caught up in just the talent or just what we see or the product of what we see or the product of the process. And uh, it's really been my desire to have something that's part of the perspective and, and really allowing you all to get inside the mind of great drummers. So, uh, yeah, keep coming in. I see Andre from Norway, Andre Benini. We got Ivan from, oh, wow, from Brazil, man. Bella, Bella Horizonte. Cool. Um, man, this is this is great. This is so cool. Please come, keep coming in and, and in the comment section, make sure that you also throw some questions our way. We're going to try to cover a lot of ground, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. But please uh, feel free to say what's up, and I'll try to give some shout outs where I can. And I appreciate those that have been uh, really checking this music out and check, or I should say checking out <laughs> uh, the music through our conversation every week. And uh, for those that don't get a chance to see it live, you can definitely go to YouTube and check out Open Studio Jazz, and they literally post the interviews like right after we finish so please make sure you check that out um open studio again yeah they're giving us some shout outs as well leave any questions so we're gonna jump in and um i think this one is is, is really deep for me because i remember meeting this gentleman um when i first came to new york uh to merely visit to see not that it was the place for me because I knew it was the place, but what school I was going to go to. And so at the time I had a chance to go to Manhattan School of Music because I was interested in them. Juilliard had not had a jazz program or created their jazz program yet. So long story short, um, I had a chance, did a tour, you know, checked it all out. And the next thing I know, they introduced me to Obed and um, Obed was so cool. He's like, yo, man, I'm going to be shedding later. You know, why don't you come come by? And, uh, you know, at that time I was in Jacksonville. So I was one of the top drummers in town. You know, I was also doing like all state and all that. So I was kind of normally used to being uh, a drummer that was getting a lot of exposure and visibility. Well, Mr. Obed invited me to his practice room and uh, he opened up a uh, sort of an expression we use in the South. He opened up a can of whip, you know what? Um, <laughs> and, but it was in such a brotherly um, love, uh, loving way. And um, he has since become one of the greatest not only jazz drummers, I remember even when, you know, we graduated college, man, Obed was working with great producers like David Foster. He's, you know, playing an incredible global music. I mean, he's just a, a talent. And I, and I have to say, there's very few people that every time I see them play, not only do they, do they inspire me, but they scare me. <laughs> and every time I see Obed play, it scares me, but in a positive way, and it makes me better. And he's also someone that even in life, you know, when I talk to him and rap with him, he always checks in with me. And uh, I really think that he is one of the most underrated drummers on the planet. I think there's not many people who have the ability and the, and the virtuosity and the musicality to accomplish what he's accomplishing. So if you get a chance to see Obed live, please pay whatever you got to pay and go see him because it is literally a work of art. So please welcome everybody, my dear brother, my friend, also fellow Floridian, Obed Calvert. Hey man, send me your Venmo because that was nice. I'm definitely sending you, I'm sending you some type of, I don't know, you, you deserve something for that. Come on, that was beautiful. It's the truth, man. It's the truth, man. So uh, how you feeling, life, man? Man, life is beautiful. Life is beautiful, man. I'm happy to be here with you, you yeah. know, to discuss not only, you know, drumming, uh, you know, that's, that's on the last of my list, to be honest with you, man. Yeah. Let's just talk about life. You okay. Know what I mean? Let's talk about life. Let's talk about how our, our journey. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. you know, I think a lot of a lot of young uh, musicians um, 
are, are struggling and finding their journey, you know, so maybe something we, we talk about can kind of help help them, you know, get on the right path because it's a it's a rough one. Yeah. So so with that said, you know, normally I, I always start with kind of the biography, but I, I kind of want to go a different route with you because it's like two brothers talking. So wh- what would you say, Obed, is, you know, the start of your journey and maybe but with also some advice, you know, because I feel like you are a guy that just I feel like opportunities always came to you to to get better and to be musical. So what are some things early in your journey that helped you that can maybe help others? Oh, man. Um, listening to my elders. Hmm. You know, um, and I, that it starts with my dad. You know, my dad's a singer. Wow. Um, well, not too many people know, but know. in the Haitian community, he's 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 a really well known gospel Haitian singer. Wow. So, starting with my dad, and and I'll tell you a story. <laughs> I was, we went to a relatively big church. You know, it was about a thousand people. You know, wow. and I remember when when I first started having uh the ability to you know get on the drums and play yeah. i remember okay god's property had just come out kurt franklin <laughs> yep <laughs> right so spot did this ridiculous thing so i'm like oh man i'm gonna go try this joint out yeah. next time we get this get the service so my dad's yeah. you know uh he, he's leading the praise and worship and i do this slick now my drum my my, my 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 church had at least two three drummers like sitting on the road like that's mm-hmm. how i start you know like the, the OG before me would you know yeah. play, and I, I checked him out. It's funny because I started playing right-handed because I looked at him. I'm I'm originally left-handed. Oh wow, okay. Yes, yeah, so Hutch, Willie Jones, like we're both we're all left-handers. Wow, who play right-handed drums. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I did this one lick, and my dad literally turns around, looks at me, and says, "Oh, bed, get off the drums, <laughs> bro." Oh my God! Talk about oh my heart just oh man! I, I I literally cried the rest of the service. Whoa! But that taught me the lesson that taught me was play the music. If it ain't mm. if it ain't necessary, why why even bother? Wow! You know what I mean? Like play what's necessary. If if yeah. if, if I'm playing a top forty gig at, at a at a corporate event, people mm-hmm. are dancing, mm-hmm. I'm laying it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. it's time to blaze, then yeah. <laughs> there's a place for that too. Yeah. You yeah. know, but I think earlier in my journey, it was learning what to do and when to do it hmm. and what not to do. Wow. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I feel like people kind of um, sleep on particularly you and I, like the black church culture and that, mm. you know, people, t- you know, they kind of romanticize it and they talk about, oh my God, I wish, you know, I could have grown up in a church or Pentecostal church, but they don't realize it was actually kind of brutal. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, cause I mean, how many times have, you know, you've been told stop playing or saying, you know, or cat will come and take the sticks out of your hand and, you know, they get you, you know, there's even like a famous, uh, I think somebody posted it on Instagram not uh, a few days ago. There's like a famous, uh, I think it's James Cleveland video from years ago where the drummer kept playing and he kept telling them to stop and finally they took the sticks, you know, out of his hand and stuff. So, you know, I think we romanticize that, but there was something in that kind of harsh reality that taught us to sort of you either do what you're supposed to do or move on you know oh, yeah or they'll, they'll take you off don't i mean yeah 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 <laughs> it ain't moving on they had no qualms of telling you to hey get up off yeah. the drums or literally lifting you off the drums yep. <laughs> <laughs> right so so man what about it and because i didn't know that about your father and i feel like in your sound you have this like very round you know beat mm-hmm. what kind of haitian rhythms or or you know cross rhythms did you kind of grow up hearing that helped you to translate to a lot mm-hmm. of the other stuff you end up doing so the main one was we, we played a lot of compa, right? Mm. Compa is a, is is a rhythm that is close to the closest to soca. Ah, you know what I mean? Okay. Which is which is that 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 that. Ah, oh, yeah, that, okay. That, 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 yeah. But we don't really play the the cat that is four on the floors with this <laughs> this pattern that you play on a cymbal. Ah, right. Um. That and, and and pretty much just straight up, uh, f- kind of countryish back in those days. You know, when mm. I when I was growing up, it's like a folkish country, just one and t- one and three on bass drum, two and four. Wow. Sometimes you'll get something in six, but <laughs> the other thing too is being in a, a Haitian church. Sometimes phrasings could, yeah. you know, it could be a five 
bar phrase. It could be, yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. You yeah. got to go with this, you know, whatever, wherever yeah. the singer feels it. Right. You know. Same with so us. It yeah. also forced forced you to, to, to use your ears. You, it yeah. was never automatic pilot. Yeah. You know? And once I got a little older, then our, our, our church kind of got a little modern. Then we would play, you know, hymns from like Fred Hammond. Okay. You know, Kirk Franklin. Uh, the, the list goes on. John yeah. P. Uh, uh, no, yeah. What's my man's name? John, John P. Key. P. Key. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. so and then, you know, with Ty, by, by the time Ty got on the scene, I was already in New York doing, you know, doing other yeah. things. I didn't really get to play much of his repertoire, but we did a lot of, you know, we started doing a lot of the new, newer mm-hmm. generation, you know, styles of music. So who was the first cat to teach you spang a Oh, You know what? I would have to say it was my middle school director, Melton wow. Melton Mustafa Jr. Oh wow! Do okay. you know? You should know. Senior. No, who, who's that? Mel, Mus, Mel, Mustafa oh, Senior. No, no. So I've I've heard of them, but I've never met those. Any kids. of them? No. Because I think uh, uh, Melton Jr. was in FAMU for a while. Okay, so I've FAMU's, heard, yeah. FAMU is not in Gainesville, right? No, so FAMU is actually in Tallahassee, Tallahassee which is two hours from Jacksonville, and a lot of Jacksonville cats, like through the years, you know, Cannonball went there right, and all right, that. Right, but right. so there's a huge contingency of cats from you know down there. Yeah, so he he was the one who actually first introduced me to like some true Spanish lane. Okay, like Count Basie, Spanky type joint. Woo. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, and then once once I got hit to that, then it was a wrap, you know. Yeah. Like, but I was still, you know, doing a lot of R and B top forty okay. gigs. Um, but when I got to high school, is when I really because my touch was completely a R and B gospel yeah. touch, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I remember the first. So EJ EJ Strickland and I went to the same high school at New York School Arts. Mm-hmm. So when EJ first heard me, he man, this cat was showed nothing but love. He mm-hmm. made like two or three tapes back then there were tapes wow. cassette tapes yep of live at the village vanguard um joe lovano with lewis nash uh man some of the baddest that's some of the best <laughs> it, it that picked, uh, damron tune oh bro come on man it, it, the whole the whole yeah. joint is All the hell, killing. Yeah. The, yeah dark keys he made um uh he made a one or two other cassette tapes that I just I was like, oh, okay, this is yeah. where it is. Yeah. This is what you know. So he he looked out for me. And then I kind of watching him play because he, he played in the big band. Okay. While I, you know, I just sat there because he was a senior and I was a mm-hmm. freshman. So there was no way I'm playing drums. And and I had to I had a lot to learn. So it was yeah. perfect. You know, so by the time he graduated, I had taken over his spot. But it was it was definitely like to to witness him and, and EJ has an amazing touch, you know. Yeah, like I, I would have to, I would have to, I would have to um, give credit to my touch to both him and JB Dyes because really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because to watch him play, I learned how to play with 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 a lot of intensity yet super super soft. Back then, that's how. Yeah, okay. he was dealing. He was come. He was coming with it like that. Wow. You know. Wow. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah. And then what about because I, I remember when I met you, you know, at MSM, you had only been there like a year, but I had been hearing about you, you know, from Grammy Band and all that. So can you maybe take us through a little bit of that journey of, you know, so you know, Mustafa introduces the Spangling pattern. You you hear it, you know, and work with JB and EJ. Mm-hmm. You hear some great records, and then you kind of start becoming like one of the cats. Like like what so was that? So funny you mentioned that 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 ass whooping right or yeah. beep up so i forget my french mom oh yeah right. but anyway <laughs> <laughs> so grammy band well the first time i actually this junior and senior they were both hosted in la and that's the first time i met hutch mm. i went to the zildjian factory because at that back then they were giving you a drum set and you get to pick you got to pick a set of symbols from zildjian wow right so i go to zildjian and who's sitting there is hutch just on a pad right wow doing his thing. So he says to me, man, listen, when you come to New York, hit me up. We'll rap. Cool. Obviously, I'm no I'm no dummy. I get mm-hmm. to New York. Hey, Mr. Hutchinson, I'm they call me Greg. I'm let's let's link up. So I was at Manhattan School of Music one time. 
right? Um, and we make an appointment, like we arrange for him to come to the school. Mm-hmm. So I had, I made sure I had everything together. I had my practice room with, asked one of my, my colleagues. I think it may have been Lee Pearson's drums, oh, actually. Wow. <laughs> so I met, man, Lee, can I borrow your drums? Yeah. You know, so I have the two kits set up in the room. And Hutch, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> and that's, that's like classic Hutch era. Whoa, I'm talking about like. Yeah. Five, seven, I mean, all types of clean. Yeah. And the way he orchestrates <laughs> yeah. all of his rudiments on the yeah. instrument was like, now, mind you, two and a half hours in, I'm done. Hutch is still getting started. He's like, yo, so let, let's go somewhere. I'm like, bro, <laughs> how much of this butt whooping am I going to get today? <laughs> he, Hutch is going for a TKO. Oh, man. Now, he already, within the first... Five seconds, it was already T. I was knocked out already. <laughs> My man was trying to send me to the morgue, bro. Like, it was cold. Hutch tore me apart. Wow. He t- but I'll tell you this. That was a lesson that needed to be learned because I, I said to myself, okay, this is what I got to deal with. Mm. Step it up. You came to Manhattan School of Music. We had a good time. And you said, okay, this is, this is what it is. And you stepped it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you've been taking care of business since then. Got have one of the fastest hands on the scene. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm so like yeah. it's 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 how you what you do with the opportunity that you know that mm-hmm. you get is what I think people forget to 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 grasp. You know, mm-hmm. like if, if you get an opportunity to be amongst greats, um and, and you say, okay, that's the standard I want to yeah. get to. You know what I mean? Like, so you do whatever it takes to get to that. Yeah. The, the, the other thing I, 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 I always love about you, Obed, is your, it seems like your North Star, you know, because as I listen to you talk or whatever, like your North Star is, is like something beyond the music. Like I've come and heard you play and been like, wow, like, you know, obviously as a drummer, it's killing, as a musician, like, it, you you have all the bases covered, but it also seems like there's something beyond the moment that you're playing for. Mm. Can you maybe talk about, I mean, I, I know we are, are both men of faith, you know, and not right. imposing anything on, on anyone else, but beyond the spirituality, because, you know, you got a lot of cats like, yeah, man, it's just spiritual. It's like, yeah, but there's something you're tapped into that is of another frequency when you play. Can you maybe talk a little bit about that? Talking about it won't do okay, it justice. Yeah. But you acknowledge <laughs> you know, like, that I ain't crazy. Of I'm... course. Of course. <laughs> like, like, how do you explain cats like Elvin? Mm-hmm. How do you, you know, like, even if they weren't, uh, uh, Elvin's a, diff- a bad example because Elvin was a spiritual man. He, he right, was, right, you know, right, right. Max, spiritual dude. Absolutely. You know, like, yeah. you know, like it is. You can't deny and say it's, it isn't part of that. Whether you so, want to so call it is. It, so spirituality has, is necessary. It has to be. Yeah. It has to be. Yeah. Because once you get past the five stroke pro, at the end of the day, yeah. it's a five stroke pro. <laughs> yeah. It's a radomacu, right? Yeah. So what do you do with that radomacu to allow it to become something that's like? It's almost like I mean, Eric Harlan said something to me one time. Cause I'm like, man, how do you deal with? And this is right when I started playing with the SF Jazz Collective. Yeah. Like, and Eric has a knack of. Knowing the music in the in the sense that he can forget about the music. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And he says to me, "Man, you know what? Um, I asked, how, how do you, how do you how do you approach the music in such a a wide uh, uh, view?" And he says, "Man, you, you got to care enough to learn the music and then not give up." Mm. That's heavy, Obed. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's almost like you got you, it's to it's to the point where you, you have to do your due diligence in right. getting yourself being, you know, comfortable with the instrument, obviously. Right, there's right, no right. there's no shortcut to that. Right, right. Say what you want. You sat on the drums mm. for I don't know, X how many hours mm. daily to mm. get to where you are now. Mm. I did the same. We all have something in yeah. common. Tony Williams, Max. Yeah, you know, you like we all have right. a level of uh, time that we spent with our instrument that mm-hmm. allows us the freedom, yeah, to tap into that 
Because without yeah. that comfort comfortability, there yeah. is no. Because you're busy thinking about how, right you know, how you gonna swing. Yeah, man, I love this conversation because I've never I've never talked about it from this angle. I feel like all the other cats I've had on Nash or you know Nasheed, we we kind of talk around the spiritual element and also the element of learning, but then letting go. But mm -hmm. I, I I think we should go deeper. And so just so you know, a lot of the audience of people who check this show out are either people who, you know, just play music because they love it. But there's a lot of like young musicians and cats that are looking for, like you say, those gems. Mm -hmm. And so I think to clarify what we're talking about, I think it's important that whatever your spiritual source is, you know, we're not talking about religion, but that you connect your playing to that, that the soul within yourself. Is that, is that kind of what you're. Completely. Yeah. And, and what that, what that, what that, I want to, I want to say something that Blade told me. Like, mm. funny because I get, I get a lot of one-liners that I, I get yeah. from a lot of my favorite musicians. That for some reason they stick with me, mm. you know. And Blade now, obviously, Brian Blade is one of the cats on this planet. Every time he sits on the instrument, yeah, it's ridiculous. Every single time, and it's not even ridiculous in the point where he's going. It's almost like it's always spiritual. It is. It is. Always. Yeah. I'm not yeah. talking about plan. And yeah, no, it's 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 beyond the technique. It's beyond technique. Yeah. 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 Every single time. Yeah. And I asked him, man, I'm and I asked, I asked him that specific. I didn't want to know about your plan. I don't care what oh. movement you how do you tap into that? And he said to me, Man, you just gotta submit. <laughs> Hold on, old man. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you know how hard it is to do that, Bim? But hold on, bro. That's all he said to me. You have to Whoa. yield. Whoa! But see that? See that's really spiritual because that what that means actually, or at least how I'm defining it, there's already sort of a path for you, right? There's a path to this, and you have to submit and surrender to it, basically. Surrender to it, and let, that's let, deep. And let your being become a vessel. Wow, bro. You know what I mean? Like, and t that is wow. hard yeah yeah it's, it's hard i mean i get passionate about i mean i'm so passionate about music wow but it's happened to that all the time wow it's hard bro wow <sighs> Woo! uncut bro that is that is man that's heavy so with that said because i feel like again it's the it's the it's the duality of the submission the spirituality but then there's some practicality there <laughs> so, so let me so let me so so let let's go into the to the deep place of your passion for music uh -huh. why do you play the mu why do you play music Obed? oh man because that, that that was my calling that was my call i never played music to make money you know what i mean i never knew where the money was gonna come from <laughs> you know what i mean like i i get i sat on it i remember i remember like it was yesterday, the first time I, I said to myself, and I ran into the kitchen to my mom, I'm going to become a musician. I was 11. Hmm. Banging on all her ceramic, her, you know, like I, there was a couch with a little vase with a flower. I mean, that vase was like my hi-hat. The edge of the couch was the snare, and I, I used the cushions to be my time. Bro, I, I just knew. It was either that or become a Navy SEAL. I, I, I really? <laughs> yeah. It's like <laughs> you're like I'll do that or be a cop. <laughs> nah, man. Look, I'm I'm trying to be. I'm trying to go in there. And, you didn't even know I was here. Go do what I gotta do and bounce. <laughs> Which is funny because that's how you show up on the scene. I'd be like, oh, where's Ob oh man? He, he already back in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, man. I wow. used to love. I used to love guns okay. and man. I, I loved warfare when okay. I was a kid. You know. Um, but, you know, God had other plans for me. So I, I decided to, you know, be, you know, follow the path, you know. And, yeah. and, and I just knew, like, I, I never really, you know, despite, you know, my parents, their worries about, you know, obviously they want to, you know, they want to make sure their kid could take care of themselves financially. Yeah. And not yeah. Be, you know, and, um, I never really, it was, that never crossed my mind. You know, like okay. I, I, I just want to be the best that I could be on that mm. instrument. And if there were flaws, address those flaws. Cause mm. we live, we go way too long without 
mm-hmm. dealing with the actual. And we know deep inside, we know what we got to work on. So why are you calling me, man? What do you What do you think? I you right. You, oh. you know the answer to that question. Go stop. But, <laughs> but it's back to what you just said about Blade. We have to submit, and part of that submission is acknowledgement. Right. Because right. you can't submit and surrender if you don't put all the stuff on the table. Yeah. You know. So, so with that said, oh, but you know, um, one, one, I had cats on, um, Kendrick Scott, like a couple weeks ago, and uh, during that time, I was reading a bunch of, you know, business stuff, and one of the things I read, it talked about how we, everybody wants to celebrate, you know, your successes, and everybody wants to ask questions about your successes, but it's really the mistakes that we make, and us talking about that, and that's how we learn. So I asked Kendrick, you know, what's one of the greatest mistakes he made, and it led us to a really cool moment what would you say for yourself are some mistakes you've made in the music or or you know anything you feel comfortable sharing that also oh, led no. to a great revelation Man, i love sharing because we don't talk about that enough mm. you know people see the amount of records you've been on the people see who you're on stage with but they don't they don't understand the um so one mistake before i even get into the story one mistake i i i, I regret not attacking younger in my, you know, like at MSM was the, the true vocabulary of bebop drumming, mm. right? Your left hand. And I, every time I saw Al Foster, hmm. Kenny, mm-hmm. Washington, Hutch, Lewis Nash, Jimmy Cobb, may he rest in peace, yeah. Joe Fonsworth, Willie Jones, um, Rodney Green. Mm-hmm. There's a few cats, select cats, who I'm like, there's something similar in their left hand that I don't quite have. Despite mm. the, now by, by this time, I was already gigging. Wow. I'm talking about like playing with Monty, playing with Right, Pedro, right, right. You know, like, but every time Jeff Hamilton sat on the drums, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that? Right. Right, right, right. There, there's a language they're speaking that I don't understand. Mm. So I, 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 I regret not dealing with that side okay. much, much earlier because now the fact that I'm addressing it has made me a much better musician, mm. you know, today. And I'm still trying to master it. Mm. The benefit, the, the, the advantage those guys had, they had guys, everyone around them played. Mm. Right, right. They spoke the same language. Right, 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 right. Right. It's hard today to find a, a, a band that speaks that language. And if you're not speaking it, they'll be like, uh, 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 uh. Right, right. They'll check you. You yeah. know, I remember coming off stage with Branford Mars, I mean, mm-hmm. with, with Monty Alexander in uh, uh, South Africa, hmm. Joe Berg, the festival they had down there. Mm-hmm. Branford walks up to me and says, You need to deal with your left hand, bro. Wow. Straight up, and mind you, I'm like 28, 29. Like I'm, I'm what? I'm, yeah, you grown. And, and I loved him for doing it because I'm that guy. If I ask you something, don't yeah. tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, you sound great. No, that's not gonna help. Me. Hmm. You know what I mean? I want to know the flaws, and I, I, and I'm not telling you that just because I actually. And people who know me know this. Like, don't give me, don't beat around the bush. Like, hmm. give it mm-hmm. to me real, because that's how mm-hmm. I grew up. And yeah, that's yeah. the only way I'm, you know, that's the yeah. only way to to keep moving wow. in a forward motion. So right, he right. gave he 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 sent me and, and and man, he he went far and beyond and sent me a pile of stuff to listen to. One of them wow. was the Everest years, Joe Jones. Wow. You know, and I made sure I dealt with that. Wow. You know, so it's it's that was one of my mistakes, you know, not addressing one of my flaws. That I had amongst many, you know, yeah. and we're all, we're never going to be perfect because we're going to get to some some part, some level in our, our our musical journey, and then notice, damn, there's something else that I forgot yeah. to deal with, yeah. or there's something else I wasn't really, I didn't quite hear. Now right. I'm right. I've grown to a, a become a, a better musician. Now I can and I mm-hmm. hear it. And now I'm going to address it. No, I love that, man. Um, I'm I'm just gonna call out a few names of people I know you've worked with through the years, uh-huh. and I want to start kind of shifting to career stuff. I know you don't like to talk about career stuff, but you are an expert at at career in in terms of you have had uh, at this point, bro. You know, you've been out here several decades. 
making great music consistently going from different band to different bands and you have a sound. So I would love to know based on, you know, obviously these different artists, um, how you built that process, you know, for those that aspire to do what you're doing. So obviously SF collective, uh, you mentioned Monte Alexander, which we both, uh, spent time, you know, working with, uh, you worked with Yosef Terry. That was uh, a bad band right there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, David Foster, which I remember, you know, you were doing stuff with him. Went Winton, you're with Winton Marsalis now. Um, you know, touring, which first of all, when I heard about that, I think I happened to be like on social media and I saw a picture of you with the band and I like screamed, man, I was so excited. So, so tell, you know, tell us, you know, that process, man, of, of, you know, what have you had to do to work with these different artists and how have you maintained that, that versatility? Cause I don't, I feel like I'll say this and I, and I'll let you talk. I don't feel that a lot of people and particularly drummers in New York city have had to work on the bandwidth of versatility or playing, uh, like you, I mean, to go from a uh, winter Marcellus, which, you know, at this particular stage of his career in life, cause I, you know, I subbed in that band he's dealing with early music and like a very specific transition. And right. then to go from that to SF collective, who is like almost defying the tradition right, and saying, right, right, you know, right, throwing right. it down the stairs to all these, other, and then all the global stuff like, the, you know, uh, you know, Godwin or Yosavani yeah. and all the other people. So man, how do you, man, you, you know, I think that? it's just the, 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 the love I have and the respect I have for different styles. Okay. You know what I mean? Like if someone told me, yo, get on the congas and play, there's no way in hell I'm gonna do that because <laughs> there there's there's a level of respect that I have for it. The, even though I, I know what the pattern sounds like, but mm -hmm. there are way too many guys who, like you and I, ha have spent so many time on our craft that can mm -hmm. do a much better job than you know, that's just not my calling. Mm -hmm. Um, so the fact that I respect every style, like if I'm gonna play with the SF Jazz Collective, I know there's a level of and I have to correct you on something. Please. If and no one would know un, unless they were in a rehearsal space or around those guys to know the amount of music they know. Of course, yeah. So some someone like Miguel Zanon, Avishai, um, Robin, like all those guys, Sean, like anyone, everyone on that picture that you saw knows the history of the music. Yeah. They know they know the history of the music. Absolutely, David. Like I mean, David alone is is a cold, tough encyclopedia. Wow. Miguel didn't win the MacArthur. I mean, he didn't win that award for, for no reason. Right, Trust right, right, me. right, right, right. This cat, I've heard him and Avishai during soundcheck play countless Charlie Parker solos. Wow. From now, that's a wow. Like ridiculous, you know. Wow. So I think. Maybe because we don't know, sometimes we, we yeah. say things. Oh, and even on went inside. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh, yeah, all he does is play old school music. I mean, once you're sitting in that chair, and I'm not sure when the, the period that you, you, you subbed in the band, you played with the band, but that music is. <sighs> yeah. No, I've, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> wide. Yeah. Yeah. The range is wide yeah. from, yes, of course, it's the tradition of the right. music. To, I mean, to blood on the fields. To right, you know, right, like, right. I mean, this cat, Black Coles. He he started it. I I mess with him all the time. I'm like, yo, this music sounds like it is what it is today because of you. Wow. If Black Coles didn't come out, we would be because they played so much. It's oh true. my god! It's true. It's true. He was this. He was he planted yeah. the seed. Right. You know, but I, I think his his where people get it misconstrued with Winton is he wants people to actually grow and do what's necessary to mm. make the music expand. But however, there's a fundamental that's missing. Right. You know, right. if you don't know what ragtime is, how in the hell are you going to play? You know what I mean? Which Absolutely. I completely agree. If, if, if right. I'm playing funk, if I don't know who Klaus Doublefield is, that's a problem. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think the fact that I I, I em, embrace um, Grupo Afro Cuba, you know, mm -hmm. some Afro Cuban joint, mm -hmm. uh, the Gaga from my my home country, mm -hmm. you know. Hold on, Brian, I, I, you got tell tell me about that. I I don't know about so that. So Gaga is a style of music. It's it's just wow. like it's it's it, but it's coming from the folkloric. 
ah. uh, aspect. It's more music that's played in in, in ceremonies, mm. you know, rituals, you know. Wow. Um, and the, that list is long. They have Yon Valu, they have Congo, they have. I mean, it's a it's a wow. list of rhythms wow. that that if if you're not from there, you wouldn't know. Or wow. if you don't study, if you don't you don't do your research, you won't wow. know. Wow. Okay. Just like if you're playing swing, there's a difference between West yeah. Coast. You know, right. there's a difference between uh, uh, bebop and and and, and post bop. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if you don't do your due diligence and understand uh, those different uh, avenues, then it's kind of difficult to to kind of be a, 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 a to camouflage your way into a stop. Hmm. Like there's a reason why Eddie Primary doesn't have a prom calling me and, and people come up to me speaking Spanish, thinking, assuming that I'm from there. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I respect the eighth note. Now the eighth note does this. Now, if you don't understand yeah, yeah. when to do that yeah, yeah. and when not to do it, then, yeah. you know, cause if I'm playing with David Foster, there's no doing this. Yeah. Play straight down the middle. And that's it. Yeah. You know? Um, so I think the fact that I've, I've, I've been able to, to understand it, understand the, the, the compression and expansion of eighth notes has allowed me to, to be put in all types of situations. And you got to yeah. think about the sound of the instrument. Right, right, right. You know, there's a lot of things that comes to play that if, if you're not familiar with, with, with that, uh, that world, it may, it's mm -hmm. difficult to fit in. Can, can we talk a little bit about, uh, you mentioned sound and setup, um, I feel like also through the years, you know, I feel like Hutch and, and even Harlan and all the cats, they're, they're like gearheads. I feel like you've mm -hmm. also been one of those cats that you, you play what you play and you just, you're more about the music. So can you uh -huh. maybe talk a little bit about what are you using these days, your setup and, and how that informs your goals and, and what you desire to do musically? Right. Or, you know. It's funny. I'm using the same, um, funny, that setup I've been, so that 12, that's a 12 by eight. Yeah. Inch time, 14 by 14 floor, and then a 16 by, by 14. And the, the snare would change based on, um, for example, that's a, a five and a half by 14. And mm -hmm. sometimes if I'm playing, like, for example, if I'm playing with the SF Jazz Club, I'll have a 13 by six yeah. for a deeper, uh, deeper sound. Mm -hmm. um, and those particular symbols happen to be there because I was trying out different. I think that may have been my first... Um, first couple runs with the big band yeah and i'm still i'm still trying to figure out what yeah. symbol to use to get yeah, yeah i'm curious victor, about that to get victor to hear me all the way from the other side <laughs> of the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah because that's the one thing like i'm i'm very interested because i know winton is very specific about symbols you know for the band and stuff. so like how have you you know, you know he never, the ride symbol? i never had that conversation okay so y'all never talked about that okay no we had to talk about he has this thing called ictus Okay, explain the, that. The ictus is basically now until I understood what he was talking about, I'm like, what the hell you mean by ictus, ictus, ictus? So it's basically being able to project a sound from the symbol without having to be loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's talking. Yeah, I've talked to him about that. Okay, you see what I mean? but he never used that term because he told. It was so interesting because he told me about. I think Billy Higgins had talked to him about that mm. and like like kind of how to how he basically said to me Billy Higgins had pulled him aside and said like. You know, that ride symbol, like everybody has their beat and it's your job to like as a drummer to find where their beat is beat on is, the symbol. Yeah. You yeah. know, so but this other thing of ictus of volume, like, can you go a little deeper into that? Yeah, because there's a way to play the instrument where it can be heard without it being loud, hmm. you know, and that only comes through touch. Wow. Right. Yeah. So if 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 I'm playing on a a, a pillow, right. And all my stuff is up and down. There's no bounce to it. When I hit the drums, that's what it's going to sound like. Mm. You see what I mean? It's going to mm -hmm. be a, 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 a kind of sturdy, mm -hmm. firm uh, uh, stroke. Mm -hmm. Now, once you learn how to... Now, cymbals is a completely different beast because I, I think there's only one way to sit there. and I mean, uh, only one way to actually execute it. And it's just by sitting there and hitting... Every single yep. spot from the oh, bell right. yep. down to the because <laughs> every single every symbol has a sweet spot. Yep. Hold on. Okay, so I I talk about that all the time, right, Obed? Uh -huh. And I get I've gotten nasty internet comments. Uh, people send me messages, man, that's BS. And I'm like, but it's true. Every symbol has a specific spot where it resonates the most. 
I mean, call, call us. I mean, whatever. I'm I'm not here. I'm not here to discuss or have an <laughs> argument with folks who don't. You know, like I'm gonna have that conversation with Hutch. I'm gonna have that conversation yeah. with somebody. You know, like yeah. with people who. Yeah. You know, but Hutch will tell you. Tony Williams will tell. Tony sat there for an hour every day just to symbol. Didn't mm. move. You know what I mean? So what makes what makes somebody like Hutch so special or yeah. Blade so special? And I've seen this in person where he could sit on my symbols and still sound like yeah. Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Hutch can sit on anybody's symbol yeah. and still sound like yeah. Because he's figured out how to okay, where's this sweet spot within three seconds? And then yeah. he just stays there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember when, when I first started playing with Steve Terray, Steve Terray would always tell me, Man, f- find that find that hum. Hmm. I always I what would that mean? What does that mean? He, he took me to go see Max and Max kind of explained <sighs> that to me. Oh, you got to go and talk to I Max? got to meet Max, man. It's funny story, but I will never forget this. So I think Max had just stopped playing okay. within maybe a year, a year, year and a half, right? So he goes, Steve takes me to go see him at his beautiful con- I mean, apartment in Central Park, right? Yeah, I heard about that, yeah. And Max is like, oh, man, yeah, I remember when we used to play these tempos with Bird. Now, mind you, this cat hadn't played. Now, you would not know what it, what it takes to play these tempos, right? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. So Max is like, oh man, you know, I remember when Bird and I used to play these temples. And he goes, dachiki, 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 dachiki. on the table. No, With oh man. No, bro. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> dachiki, 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 dachiki. And I'm like, I look at Steve and he's like, well, I told you. I told you. <laughs> bro. See? See? <laughs> Oh, wow, goodness, man, that's a great man. story. So wow. these guys have a, they have a, a particular, they have a thing that they've um, developed with a symbol that never mm-hmm. gets lost, you know? So wow. you just got to spend time with it to, 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 yeah. to really understand it. And that hum is when, when you hit the symbol at the, yeah. at, in the sweet spot, yeah. and not only do you hear the attack, which it goes... Yep, it's that, yep. Yeah. yeah. Regardless yeah. of the tempo. Yeah. Tony was the mat. I mean, listen yeah. to Tony's symbol alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's yeah. when you know you're doing yeah. something right when you get that hum. Wow. You know. So so Obed, man, I, I know you you know, I've let my audience know there are some things that Obed wants to to discuss, and we're gonna bring those up in a second, which is cool because most drummers that I've had on here, they they kind of just uh are like, hey, whatever you want to talk about. But I love when uh, when we started kind of the pre-show, Obed had some specific things. Um, but I've always had this question for you. I, don't, I think it's probably the one thing me and you have not talked about. Have you ever thought about being a band leader? Have you ever thought about, you know, fronting your own band? Because it seems like, a, you know, a bunch of us, even Eric and, you know, Hutch kind of, um, you know, a lot of us have kind of at some point tried to, you know, have our own band or do our own thing. But is that something you've ever desired? I never had a desire to, to, to desire something completely different than to say, oh, you know what? I'll give it a try. Mm. You know, like I think I'm at the stage right now where musically I do have something that um, I can offer the world um, that I'm something's in the works. Just put it that way. Okay. Within good. the next within the next year, you'll be hearing something good for okay. sure. But I never had the desire to be. I just you know, I'm, I'm, I'm that dude who like walks into the room. And I observe everything until, uh, I, basically, I observe until I'm able to make an assessment of mm-hmm. okay whether I want to do that or not. Right, right. By learning through others, right. you know, trials and errors, right? Right. And being a band leader, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I went to go see with the big band. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, how in the world, like, to get. Those mini right. cats together to get the music together to get a set list, just a set list alone. Forget about writing the music, like just a set list alone. Okay, who soloed on this? Mm-hmm. What key? What tempo? Like, there's so many things to take mm-hmm. into consideration before you have a decent set list where your audience doesn't get bored. Mm-hmm. Who, oh, man, just man, listen, let me do this gig. We'll go, <laughs> give me my check and let's go. <laughs> No, 
always because I I always knew that, but I was like, I, I want him to say it. And and the reason why, you know, I'm I'm taking that into this other thing of I feel like a lot of the new drummers are everybody, you know, because I love to hear your your opinion about sort of, you know, this next generation of drummers. I feel like they're trying to be everything all the time. You know, they, they want to learn the music. They want to, you know, be great bop drummers, also play modern. They also want to be band leaders. They also want to be entrepreneurs. It's like all of this stuff. And I think they look at like you and, and, and Hutch and, and some may check me out or whatever and don't realize that all of the different things we we continue to do have been in stages. Right. You know what I mean? So right, right. so with that said, like, what are some what are some levels of advice you have for the young drummers who, you know, have all of this information and right. YouTube so they get to see everything Tony did and Max and then now you and I, um, what, what are what are some levels of advice that you think they Man, should know? The only advice I could think of right now is look at the bigger picture. You know, wow. like I think we want some, we want what we want tomorrow, wow. sometimes right now. Yeah. But that may not necessarily it, it usually never happens that way. Sometimes it may take five years. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may take 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at life in a bigger picture and, and you don't put that much pressure on yourself, I think it kind of takes a lot of the weight off your shoulders where you say, you know what? I have five years to deal with this. Now, mind mm -hmm. you, don't take them five years and slip. Yeah. yeah. You got to be constructive with those five years yeah. or productive, I should say. You know, so you, you, put, you set goals, which I've done, you know, Till this day, I still do. You know, yeah. I have I have a a marker and a, and a mm. board that I, you know. Okay, this is the date. By this date, wow. I need to get to that. And, and this is about about music. You're talking about music, real estate, whatever. Okay, which we're going we're going to talk about. So you whatever have a, it is, life. So, so life to break it down in general, so you have a chart with your goals because I because I'm huge into this with goals and all that, and then you have like a, a sort of a, an expected end date. Yeah. Nice. What you got you to. into that? You have. You know what got me into that, man? Like, figuring out, man, I went to my, my freshman year in my high school music. Um, now, mind you, I went to New Orleans School of Arts, which was yeah. a decent performing arts high school, which I knew theory, I knew. But my, my high school music was a completely different mm -hmm. ballgame. Mm -hmm. Like, just being able to deal with the piano, mm -hmm. which I didn't take in, in high school, mm -hmm. but having to deal with kids who, who now, like, people like... Tim Green, like who yeah. was an amazing <laughs> piano player. Like yeah. Tim and I were in the same uh, uh, piano course, and wow. he was like playing all these bebop lines. And I'm like, <laughs> hold on a second, like do we right. have right. do we have a class for drummers? <laughs> yeah, right. So, so right. it was like the drummers and singers were always yeah. struggling, you right. know. Yeah. So I said to myself, uh, so I, I literally had a schedule from eight to nine. I would mm. shed. From nine to ten, work on my theory. From ten to this, work on whatever. Like I literally had a schedule that that I, I did not. I mean, I would say eighty percent of that schedule was completed. Now, okay. obviously, with life, right? Things happen where you don't get. I'm not saying to be. I mean, it's, it's damn near impossible to be perfect. However, right. if you say you're gonna do some, if those that other twenty percent I didn't get to finish in the semester, I. I held myself accountable to get mm -hmm. it done during the off seasons. Right. You know, I'm using off season like I'm a basketball player, but you right. know what I mean. <laughs> so, so with that said, man, you you brought up something that I I can't wait to hear you talk about because I do not know how you have managed to do all the things that you've done, and the world knows about you, and you are not into yeah. social media. So, can ah. we talk about that? And you you specifically wanted to you you were like, we got to talk about that. Oh. So, Floor so, is yours. So social media, I mean, I remember when MySpace, you remember MySpace when MySpace yeah, bro. came out? <laughs> yep. So you remember how I said I'm one of those people who just sit there, sit back and just yeah. observe, right? And back then, I could tell it was going to be a problem like it is now. Wow. Now, obviously, there are pros yep. to technology, right? Right. But when the cons outweigh the pros to me, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. So now what are my cons with social media? My cons are. Um, let's keep it in music, musical okay. terms, right? Musical terms. Everyone sounds the same. Wow. Like you get a few cats. Yeah. Like Marcus Gilmore, who has a voice. Right. He has a different yeah. unique voice, but he's yeah. coming from yeah. a, a line of. Yeah. The whole. You know other, what I mean, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. But there there aren't many cats who you can sit there, like you could listen to Tame for three seconds and know it's Tame. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You yeah. could sit there for 10 seconds of Hutch and know it's Hutch. Yeah. You could sit there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. there's a lot of, a lot of, that right there, people, another thing that Billy Hart told me, Jabali mm. told me one time, he's like, people aren't comfortable until they sound like somebody else. Whoa, Obed. I'm telling you, I get these things where I'm like, I never forget them. <laughs> and I thought about it and I'm like, wow. he's, he's right. Wow. Let's take the gospel world, for example, right? When Aaron Spears came out, it was yeah. over. Yeah. You know, like Gerald Haywood was the grandfather yeah, was, of all that. Right, you know? right. But then it just went, you know, yeah. like you got a few cats like Kelvin Rogers who still has right. his voice. Right. Like, but 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 80% of the the rest of them, like like there's no so when 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 I feel like people forget, yes, I'm not saying do not get this because I was inspired by Tony. Yeah, I was inspired by Elvin. I was inspired right. by. I mean, there's a list of guys: Dennis Chambers, Vinny Calliuta. Right, all right. those cats inspired me. But I also knew at a young age, there's no way in hell I'm gonna be. I can play like Dennis. Right, right. Dennis is Dennis. You know what I mean? So I I I, I worked on allowing myself whatever came out. Okay, I guess this is what it's gonna be. As long as it was clear, clean. That's all that mattered to me. That's hmm. how I'm gonna phrase my my, my 16th notes, or that's how I'm gonna phrase this paradiddle between my hands and my foot. Hmm. That that is what it is. Being able to be content with who you, what your DNA is. My DNA can never be Philly Joe Jones, mm -hmm. despite mm -hmm. of how many times I try to play that paradiddle the way he, or that paradiddle diddle the way he does. Right, right. It's never gonna sound like that. Wow. You know. So I think social media to me, it, it just. That that was one. Number two is the amount of time that yeah. it took. You know, people were just consumed. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. before you know it, and I, and I'm not exaggerating. Correct me if I'm wrong. At least, and I'm being nice now. At least two hours a day. Yeah. And yeah. that's for the people who actually can put it down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're right. Two hours a day, you know how much work I can get done? That adds up. Yeah. Two times seven is 14 hours a week. You know, then 14 times. Yeah. Then a year, days, weeks have gone by where wow, you're just sitting bro. on a screen doing wow. what? And now, mind you, this is this is just you scrolling through. Now, if somebody says something you don't like, then you yeah. address that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, there's, a, there's the social media arguments. Wow. Now you're having a conversation, yeah. which sometimes when you're reading something via text, it, it could be taken the wrong way as opposed to me calling you on the phone. Hey, man, what did you mean by this? And having an actual human, like a some type of dialogue that's human as opposed to typing something that, that you know, the, the person may have made, the, 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 they may not have meant it in that malice way you know mm -hmm. it may have just come out that way it, but then it looks it becomes real real ugly now you got folks who grew up together who were best friends it's true who can't stand each other now because yep. they didn't do do themselves a favor and pick up the phone and let's man let's yeah. talk about this like like people you know wow it, you know like yes i think people who are promoting their art it, it's it's a beautiful platform to connect mm -hmm. with around the world yeah, that I I agree. You know, I'm not going to mm -hmm. deny that that's not um, that's not a plus. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like I have so much to work on musically. I have so mm -hmm. many flaws in my in my thing that I'm that I'm trying to address that I, I don't have time for it. I really don't. Like I don't have time for it. And I got two kids now, a lady. You know, like I got to deal with them. And I love to do my I love to do my thing. Like I love to, I got I got to go play my basketball. Yeah, I got to no, yeah, go I got to go do my thing, you yeah. know. So so to balance keeping myself in you know happy and yeah. sane and balancing the road life with being home, I have zero 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 time for, for being on social media. That is the most um amazing and beautiful explanation I've ever heard about it and uh 
yeah, you got me I'm, I'm readjust my social media time, you know. To each his own. <laughs> no, but, but I mean, but I mean, but to your point, you, you're right. Like, I, and I already kind of was starting to do that before, but I, for me, because for me, I look at it as a, a means of connecting and promotion, right. you know. Um, but no, that's great. Before we run out of time, because um, I know we're going to also leave our audience with some music. Uh, the other thing you wanted to address, um, which we talked about, was real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you have been someone before, you know, you speak about it oh, for the audience. Obed has always been someone who I've always seen be incredibly financially stable. I've never seen him uh, wanting for anything. I've never seen him struggling. And um, and not just because he has great gigs, but he also has you know been owning properties for a while. And for those that may not understand, as a jazz musician, that can be very difficult to do because there's so many different things you have to figure out economically. And let's be real, uh, for the last year and a half, all of us have been mostly sitting home um, with the exception of a few. So, Obed, do you want to just, you know, give 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 your whatever you want to share about real estate and financial uh, wellness? Once again, I'm, I'm going to go with the long term. Right. Um, f- hypothetically speaking. Right. I'm 20. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm living in, in, a, in a in a three bedroom apartment. OK, so now I got to think about this, not in a six month plan or a year plan. Like I, I gotta think of this a five to ten year plan. Or I say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with my means within the first five years and make sure I have this much down to put on a down payment, whether it's a dive or not. It doesn't really mm-hmm. matter. Man, I live in and if y'all knew what my apartment looked like when I first moved to New when I first mm-hmm. moved out of the dorms, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I was once on 169th in Amsterdam. It wasn't, it actually was a decent neighborhood, but it wasn't, you know, like, like it's still a hood, you know, but mm-hmm. I had a bigger, hmm. I had, I had something to look forward to. There's a light all the way down seven years from now, I bought my first crib with my mom in Florida, you know, mm-hmm. seven years from then I bought my apartment from my apartment in Weehawken. Seven years from now, from then, I'm here. Hmm. You know, like it was always a bigger picture. Okay, so how much will I need? Like, you remember how you said you said how I said I set these goals, Mm -hmm. right? How much would I need in seven years to be able to put a down payment, ten percent or three percent? If Mm -hmm. you know, for HOA, if you Mm -hmm. you know, first homeowners, like Mm -hmm. okay, um, okay, I need this. So Mm -hmm. now. I'm no longer buying three drinks a night after the gig. <laughs> I'm only buying one. Right. I'm not right. saying not to have a good time. Right. Right. Enjoy right. yourselves. Right. But have a cap. Right. And that all takes discipline. If you're not disciplined, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it all comes down to being disciplined. Why was that quickly before I let you go? Why was that important to you as a jazz musician to to have a home or to have ownership? And not just say, hey, you know what, I'll, I'll, you know, as long as I can pay some rent or whatever. Like, why was home ownership important? Do to the you? math. Two thousand dollars, like for example, in New York, right? Average fifteen hundred dollars to twenty five hundred dollars a month. Average. Now that's mm-hmm. if you if you got two roommates, three, room, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. do the math. Yeah. For five, six, seven, eight. 10 yeah. years. Some yeah. some of some some of my colleagues been in New York for 20 years, still yeah. in the same apartment, yeah. still paying yeah. that money. <laughs> yeah, right. You could have owned your own joint by now. Right, right, right. So why would I give this dude or this ma'am my money mm-hmm. when I at the end of the, if if I'm looking at, at at the bigger picture in the right. long haul, I get to own my own joint. And then right. Rent it out to someone, right. make some extra income right. to have them pay your, your mortgage for you. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, I was always, a ma- I, I love math, and it yeah. just didn't add up to me. Like, yeah. why am I spent? wait, I just spent yep. Yep. $2,000, that's $24,000 yeah. that I just spent Yep. down the drain. I got right. nothing left. Right, right. So I was like, nah, that ain't going to be me. Well, and I think it's also important to know, uh, you know, another friend of yours, uh, and ours uh, in the scene, you know, Ruben Rogers, he's also very much in real estate. And he's Ooh. talked about how that's helped a lot 
with some of the, the musical goals and things that, you know, he's wanted to accomplish and stuff. So I, I just wanted to, you know, me and you've had that conversation and I, you know, Ruben, I'm always talking to him, but mm -hmm. I think for the audience, it's really great for us to have that as an open conversation and dialogue, because right. I think it's great for people to think about and, and some food for thought. Um, and there are ways to invest, invest your money where mm -hmm. you don't necessarily have to have a ton of it, mm -hmm. but there are ways to, you know, put stuff aside and forget about it that I mean, but then again, that takes discipline that right. takes, you got to want to, you yeah. know, and it's not going to happen. Like I said, it's not going to happen overnight. It right. may be a 10 year, uh, a 10 year project, but I promise you it, it's worth it. Yeah. It's yeah. worth it. You know? And I, I don't think we talk about that enough because I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave some people's name and I'm talking about legends who are mm -hmm. still renting. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. You own your own shit. You can say no to a lot of gigs. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gigs that yeah. aren't, and I, and I only say no to a lot of gigs because some gigs do not help music. Right. They actually right, make right. you, they make you more depressed. Now yeah. you have to be smart to say, now, nah, am I going to, what do I benefit from this mm -hmm. gig? You know, because sometimes saying no can help yeah. you down the line yeah. to be able to say yes to that gig. That's going to pay. That's going to help you pay that down. down yeah. Payment on that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think we have to, we have to, now don't get me wrong, don't, don't starve, but right. sometimes saying no behooves you, yeah. you know, behooves you to say no. And then it, it, the, the payoffs, you reap the yeah. benefits in, in, in the future. My yeah. humble opinion. No, I love it. I love it. So very quickly, Obed, first of all, I, I man, this has been such a great conversation. Um, I know you, we're going to play some music. Um, you want to tell us, you know, a little bit like what you got coming up. Tell us, you know, introduce the track that we're going to listen to. Um, what I got coming up. Okay. I got a ooh, Saturday. I'm, I'll be in Switzerland with um, uh, Ben Wendell. Nice. Uh, Joe Sanders. What, man, my, I haven't played with him in a while. That's, that's, oh, that's, man, be fun. that's one of the bad cats. Yeah. That's my, yeah. that's my home. He played in my senior recital at my high school music. So, um, Shy Maestro. Mm hmm. Um, we got to, you know, so that gig's on Saturday or Sunday, I think the 12th, mm -hmm. um, come back home. And then, uh, I go out with Mike Moreno the week after in Houston. Mm -hmm. So whoever's in Houston, come out, check that out. Cool. And then I'll come back and then I'm out for a month with Jazz Lincoln Center. Nice. Um, and I joined this, uh, German saxophone player, Tobias. I always mispronounce his last name, so I'm not going to butcher it. Um, but though, you know, those little things. Little projects here cool. and there, you know, cool. just to keep keep my keep my my musical journey, cool. you know, flourishing. Um, cool. But this next this track that you're about to hear is a track that um, that is from a record that I'm I'm actually proud to be on, and it's um, one of my Haitian brothers, Godwin Lewis. Mm -hmm. um, I produced the record and mm -hmm. played drums on it, and and I know a lot of my my Haitian brothers are on the. the you know they're they're joining us. John Byrne being one of them. Oh, nice. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I wanted to, you know, some for the some for the zoes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful man. Well, well, man. I just want to say, oh, but I appreciate you, man. I appreciate the friendship, the brotherhood, and the inspiration, man. This this talk's gonna have me journaling and and oh and, uh, man, likewise. Some goals. So, thank you for being part of this, bro. Appreciate thank you it. for asking. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Of course, man. Of course, yes, man. So. uh I will say uh, for those that are still on here, man, that was amazing. I'm going to give a couple or, or I should say a few shout outs before we play some of this music. Uh, I want to say thanks to Christian uh, from Orange, California. Mike D, uh, I think yeah, we saw you from Norway. Alan Arzu, thank you. Yes, man, that was that was a beautiful moment. Um, that, very emotional uh, when we started talking about fully submitting to music. Um, also, Ivan, man, uh, I love your comment as well. Uh, he is definitely made of a lot of truth. Um, I want to say a uh, shout out to, who do we have? Oh, man, Keith Copeland. Wow. I, I love that. He says, uh, yeah, getting honest criticism is priceless. Yep. Um, thank you, Adriel. Also, Claude. Uh, what's up, Norman? Uh, Carly, thank you as well. So, oh, TG, Tim Green. Oh man, Tim Green's an incredible uh, saxophonist 
and a composer, arranger. We've made a lot of music together. He's also made a lot of music as well with Obed. Um, so thank you all so much um, next week. I'm so excited. We're going to have some great guests. I think we got, um, I think Matt Wilson is going to be with us next week. So um, so I look forward to that. Please tune in. And again, you know, uh, with a lot of the incredible knowledge that was uh, shared, go back, you know, get that pencil and paper out. Uh, and, and like Obed said, you know, create that goal sheet and go through the episode. That's how I study a lot of great interviews as well. So thank y'all. And uh, we're going to leave you with this wonderful music and uh, take care. I see you next Wednesday.